I received a question earlier today that was basically, um, how do I start investing? How do I put my savings in investing? What's the best way for me to, you know, to just start off the bat? And my advice to anyone who's starting out, you know, new and hasn't invested in the stock market before is to buy incrementally. Um, the reason 401k plans and, and other retirement plans like that work generally speaking and you know return for the vast majority of people money and the reason uh on the opposite side the reason a lot of people lose money also is because of uh, dollar cost averaging now you have to understand when you are going in to buy into the stock market that it is impossible to predict what is going to happen. It's impossible to know if the prices will be higher or tomorrow. What we do know is over a long period of time, the purchasing power of a dollar declines. And because the dollar is designed by the central bank, the Federal Reserve, to decline in purchasing power over time, or also that inflation is a target of the Fe of the federal reserve which means that it's trying to target a reduction in purchasing power of the dollar what that means for stocks is that stock prices over the long term will increase because stock prices are just representing prices in the economy where money is going in the economy if more money is going to banks in terms of interest payments because of rising interest rates bank stock goes up if more people are spending money on amazon shopping amazon goes up so all it's really doing is representing that and cash flow and you know earnings and things like that they go up with prices when prices go up um the famous uh, you know when prices go up stock prices go up the famous example i use is that um a fruit seller um if the price of an apple goes today from 50 cents to a dollar he probably likely won't you know in 10 years from now be selling less apples what that will just do if the price doubles in 10 years is make the amount of money that the apple seller is bringing in the revenue to double it will go from 50 cents an apple times a million apples uh, $500,000 to a million apples times a dollar, which is a million dollars. So you see how that works. And that's the bet you're basically making in the stock market. But you're betting that, you know, the biggest companies will actually outperform um, the growth in terms of dollar figures than would then you would get with something like a, a treasury bond you're betting that you know the moves that are going into those top 500 stocks in the s p 500 that those 500 companies are that big because they're in for the most part growing parts of the economy so the money is shifting towards those 500 stocks and and that's what the s p 500 that you always hear about that's what the s p 500 represents is the 500 biggest stocks so if a stock becomes now in the top thousand not in the top 100 500 it's dropped and another stock replaces it so the s p 500 will always replace you know the hottest sectors of the economy that are you know taking up the most money that people are spending the most money on and so in the long term it should go up now that doesn't mean it will for certain in places like japan in places like europe um there were huge market crashes that you know the markets have not recovered from now and that in japan was 30 40 years ago and the market still hasn't recovered so if you were invested at that time at those high prices you never made your money back so there are instances where that can happen can that happen in america absolutely there is a chance that could happen we just haven't had that occur yet and um it's mostly because our industries were unlike japan's the the growth expectations weren't as big back then in japan they had you know the mentality that japanese companies will dominate the world in terms of electronics in terms of automobiles but we saw that that wasn't necessarily the case and it, it uh you know when people get 
happy like that and the money keeps coming in there's the greater fool theory which indicates that you know as long as there's someone stupider than you to say well it's went up a hundred percent this year i need to get in now before it's too late it keep going up and up and up um and by then those people are of course getting in uh, too late and buying from the people that got in earlier that are selling to take their profits to the pocket so you could be a victim of this now the best way to trade or to invest is incremental purchases the SPY is the S&P 500 uh, ETF and a smart way to invest is of course to just buy the S&P 500 on a weekly basis or a monthly basis a way where you're accumulating shares over time rather than just taking that money don't take ten thousand dollars and buy into the s p 500 buy in over time this way um if you took that ten thousand dollars and broke it up into a thousand dollars a month over 10 months you'd be buying a longer term trend so you would either be if the prices are going down you would be averaging and getting your average price lower if the prices are going up yes you know you're not making as much profit but you also reduced your downside risk dramatically and there will be times in that 10 months where you will be able to buy cheaper than you otherwise would have if you were buying 100% at that time period. So that's why 401ks work because people are average pricing. When the market is down, they're still putting money in. Instead of um, just taking those losses, they're bringing the, the average price down. So when the market does go back up and recover, their profits are greater than they would be if they just stopped investing at that point and held. So cost, dollar cost averaging, as it's called, is your friend and that's how you should be investing um what you should be investing in is you know either and in the index which is really one of the safest ways to invest in the market because you're not picking winners and losers picking winners and losers doesn't work day traders and people that think they could outperform the market usually fail miserably um you may outperform the market one or two times but over your lifetime you're not going to outperform the market consistently every year and in fact even professionals don't 96 percent of mutual fund managers don't outperform the s p 500 and the ones that do don't do it for a long term they do it for a, a year or two and then it's back down to underperforming again so that's what really it really sucks you know if you're going to be saying well i'm going to buy this stock it's going to double it probably won't and you'll probably lose a bunch of money and you'll be happier if you just put it in the s p 500 remember investing is a long term game you're not there to make money in the next year or the next two years if you try to do that your money is not being put to use your money is being put to use by making sure that you're buying a diversified portfolio of the top producing companies in the united states of america and so you want that because if you buy the s p 500 you're buying 20 percent of every dollar you put in is going into tech stocks like apple and microsoft um united healthcare and other big health companies 15 percent of your money is going into there 13 percent of your money is going into banks um and another 20% is or more even is going into consumer discretionary and consumer staples. So <clears throat> you really in that case are really investing the best way you possibly can. Another great way to invest is to buy these dividend stocks and not just any dividend stocks. I'm talking about uh, dividend the higher dividend stocks that are within the s p 500 not just any dividend stock you see because there's reasons why a high dividend can result in a lower stock price tomorrow a high dividend does not necessarily mean that it's going to continue on that dividends what you need to look for when you're buying dividends is number one is the company actually in a position to grow over the time period that i'm holding this and number two how often is this dividend paid out and um, uh, what is the percentage? How often are they increasing the dividend? If the company is increasing their dividends for 10 years or more, that's one, That's a good company to invest in. There's also aristocrats, which are companies that for 25 years or more have increased their dividends. And 
you need to consider that when you buy those high dividend stocks, um, you hold them for a short period of time, you can't make money on them. But when you hold them over the long term, the dividend that you're getting paid out is really reducing the risk you have associated with that. So if you're getting 4% a year um, on on your money after, uh, after a certain amount of time period, you will have made back the money that you put in there without having to depend on the fluctuation of the price of the stock. Of course, if the price of the stock goes down, they could still increase the dividend in terms of percentage and still be paying less of a dividend. So that's something to consider also. But um, you could also look at something like an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund, which is a lot like a mutual fund, but uh, usually is tied to an index. And there's something called VYM. It's Vanguard's high dividend um, stock they pay it, it's tied to an index of the higher yielding dividend stocks inside the s p 500 and that with time will do really well for you also because they're all huge companies they're not going anywhere you don't you could sleep safe at night knowing your money is in there even if the market drops it'll come back and you'll get those in when the market drops the money floods into those high dividend stocks because people want that guaranteed earning on their money they don't want it just sitting there without a dividend with the additional risk associated you know so if the market goes down 20 percent one year you make that up with the five years of the dividend that you just got paid um so when the market does decline dramatically it's you you your losses are really um over the long term minimalized uh they're not nothing but they're less than they would be if you were holding stocks without any dividends so look at those now you might be asking yourself one thing how am i going to buy one share a month or one share a week with a ten dollar commission um if i want to buy one share of uh let's say vym it's 75 dollars around right now and you're saying that's ten dollars that I lose right off the bat. It's almost like I'm buying it at sixty-five. That's why you should use the Robinhood app when you first start um, to accumulate shares to build your positions. And then you may want to move to a more legitimate broker, or not legitimate, because Robinhood is, for all intents and purposes, a legitimate company. Um, the thing about Robinhood is it's cheap because there's no features on the platform. You need to do your research elsewhere and you're just hitting using Robinhood for, to hit the buy or sell button. Um, but Robinhood lets you buy and pick up these things with zero commissions. So you are automatically, when you have zero commissions, beating another investor because even though your returns may not be less, you have to think about how much you would have spent in commissions, $10 to buy and ten dollars to sell in most um on td ameritrade let's say so if i want to buy 20 shares of vym that's twenty dollars and i'm already down twenty dollars just on the purchase and the sale um so if you're using Robinhood, you could save money that way and that way you have more room for the stocks to drop and because cost, dollar cost averaging works extremely well with Robinhood, extremely well because over the long term dollar cost averaging does work and if you're using a regular broker then you make 10 trades a year buy and sell that's two hundred dollars that you otherwise would have had in your pocket or otherwise would have bought more shares with. The one thing Robinhood doesn't have is a dividend reinvestment plan, which is, um, it's not the most urgent thing for you because you could just get those dividends and then buy more shares with them yourself. But there is a dividend reinvestment plan which automatically takes dividend, the company um, or the ETF pays you and invests it right back into that stock. So um, if you get uh, let's say the stock is a hundred dollars and you get a four um, percent uh, dividend after one year you'll have 1.04 shares or something like that it's not an exact science because it depends on the price fluctuations of the stock but more or less yeah you accumulate shares with time as you do with the appreciation so it works in your favor to have a dividend reinvestment plan robin hood does not offer that so um you have to the, the dividends come in cash to your account and then you could do whatever you want with the cash. Some people use the cash as, um, some people really use the cash as 
cash you know they use it as income it's a way to supplement your income while your money is tied up so that you could pay bills or whatnot with it um of course it's smarter to reinvest it because you're getting compounded interest on top of compounded interest and with vym you would have doubled your money in the last five years doing that um, and that's the case for a lot of these big wig uh, Vanguard ETFs. They're really good because they're really low cost. Um, I think it's like 10 basis points or something for VYM. So you see how cheap that is. A comparable mutual fund is like a point and a half. And here you have 10 basis points compared to 1.5%. It's a fraction of the cost. And 1% on your money over time adds up adds up so whenever you're buying these things as good as they look always look at the expenses associated because once you take into account expense ratio which is what the fund is charging you to manage plus commissions you're done for you're done for an extra percent in commissions in uh, expense ratio plus a ten dollar commission on the purchase um you're screwed unless you're investing tens of thousands at a time which we it's i don't do that and i don't recommend you do that i i recommend you do dollar cost averaging if you're doing this in in a different type of account a lot of etfs are free so if you want to buy etfs you could buy them but you can't buy individual companies or you can't buy a lot of etfs there's a few that every broker offers a lot of them are vanguard those are really good etfs so if you want to use td ameritrade or schwab or something like that and you want to invest in those you know diversified holdings through etfs you can do it for free you don't they, they don't charge commission so you wouldn't even need, need robin hood but i recommend robin hood because you could buy just about anything you want on it so no matter what your strategy is if you want to buy leveraged etfs you could get them for free if you want to buy um regular stocks one share of this one share of that you could get them for free so Robinhood works in your favor in the long run. So just to recap this video, what you want to do is um, in either invest in an index or invest in something that a fund that gives you a very diversified group of holdings that are tied to an index, not tied to what some fund manager thinks is going to happen tomorrow. There's no predictor of what can happen if you want a day trade or you want to swing trade or you want to trade for a profit in a taxable account, you'll probably lose a bunch of money. Um, that's the truth. You can't beat the market. You just can't. It's too difficult. It takes too much time. And when you're considering all the effort that you're putting into beating the market, you could just take that and get another side job and, oh, while your funds are in the index and you'll make you know, more money that way. So. It really is something that you don't need to like you know these 401ks and these uh, IRA accounts and the reason why people in mutual funds make a lot of money over the long term is because they dollar cost average they're always buying in they're getting interest on top of interest on top of interest and they're not betting which way the market is going to go in the immediate future or even in the short term future they're holding 30 40 years the dollar is going to decline in that time period um the cash flow of companies is going to simply increase just because the dollar is declining and you're just betting on inflation that's all you're doing is betting that there's going to be inflation and you're betting that you know you're going to be one step ahead of the manifestation of that by buying an index which is weighted by the sectors that are have the largest market cap of companies so once that every whenever that balance is that that's being you know rebalanced um you're not losing the value the way you would if you were just holding that sector because the new sectors that are taking over the market share are coming back and creeping up in terms of their um their weight inside the s p 500 so um yeah that's what you want to do that's your best investment strategy and no matter what type of account you're doing get in an ira account a roth ira account a uh, health savings account a student uh, uh college savings account those are the safest ways to do it um and that's what you need to do and that's what that's what you should to, to start open an account with robin hood it's like five dollars you can put in you could put in one dollar you could do anything and just you know learn how it works but <clears throat> when you're buying one share at a time 
or you're buying smaller amounts and you're not paying commissions, you could have that luxury of taking the time you need to really teach yourself how this all works and to participate without risking a lot of money and without losing money on things like commission. So you really should be doing that. Robinhood, two thumbs up for Robinhood. Um, it really in levels the playing field for you as a new investor because you're buying things you otherwise couldn't buy because of commissions uh, you're saving that money and you're able to build a really diverse portfolio for yourself without paying commissions and by buying you know one share at a time of this one share at a time of that and that's what i do personally if i have an idea about a stock pick I don't go in heavy. I'm not one of those people that puts thousands behind something just because there's a chance it could go up. I'll buy one or two shares in Robinhood and leave it. If it makes money, it makes money. If it loses money, it loses money. I lose a few bucks. It's not such a big deal at the end of the day. It's also beneficial for you in terms of that. You could set up like recurring deposits and you could save your money into an app like Robinhood. Anyway, in your savings account, you're getting jack shit for that money anyway. So if you put your money into something like Robinhood and you're buying these indexes, over three to five years, it's likely you'll make interest on it, a lot more interest than you'll make in a savings account or by buying bonds or anything like that. And um, uh, you could do it in a way where it's like a savings account, an automatic withdrawal from your bank account, set it and forget it uh go in once a month buy whatever you want to buy set that and forget it and come back next month and don't even look at it uh that's the trick the trick here is to buy dollar cost average set it and forget it once you buy the consider the money gone until you know a, a certain point in time and that you're older and that you've matured enough and you've been trading and buying enough that you can make the decision if it's time to withdraw the money if if or if god forbid you know you you need the money for whatever it is but that's a way to let it grow with interest the way that you would have a savings account with a lot more interest is to use something like robin hood where you can buy in right away and dollar cost average all the time